have prefix N I L I with this, that won't do. Uh, what do you have if you have to add a name Mitesh? Mitesh. You have the N I T and you have the E S H. No, you can't use this. This is separate, and you will have to do N I T E S H separately. Yeah, tell me. See, as in, as in when when you are inserting a, a word in it, you will be creating nodes in the while. So when you are creating a node, just uh, we will initialize it to zero, and when we we'll, uh, when the last letter of that word will come, we'll mark that node as uh, as one. So. Typically, it's I mean not very uh, I mean uh, to implement it. What we do is we maintain we'll, we will uh, construct a uh, structure in which whatever information we need, this I talked about is end right now, and there can be other miscellaneous information which you can associate with uh, with that uh, that particular node. So we'll create that structures and we can have an array of pointers to these structures. So, like for English dictionary, there will be 26 pointers. So, if we access array of three, we, that can be uh, seen as array C, uh, the link C. So, at each step, you can figure out in order one uh, uh, which link to follow. This way, uh, whenever you are searching or con the construction time of try is like the total number of characters present uh, in the data set. And even the search can be done in the uh, total number of letters. Uh, of the string. While you are constructing this try, you, you have 26, an array of 26 pointers to the structures. So if you have to access n, you will uh, just find out the number of n, n minus the sky value and just go to that link. So that, that can be done in order 1. You can see whether it's null or not. Another thing is that, uh, like I talked about, that you can associate different properties with the nodes. So, suppose uh, you have to answer that how many words are there uh, with with a prefix and nit in particular try in particular data set. So, with each of these nodes, like you associated is n, you can associate a count at how many letter, uh, how many uh, nodes are, uh, 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 how many words are there below this subtree. Uh, did you guys get that? So just whenever you are uh, inserting, like you are inserting uh, Nitesh here, so when you come to N, you do count plus plus here, because one an, another word is getting inserted in this. You will follow N, I, I will also get count plus plus, and uh, this way you can, at each node you will have the information that how many letters till that prefix exists. Another thing is that uh, this uh, structure which I have talked about, I've, I haven't uh, gone into much detail uh, because this will be again covered in uh, strings when we will be teaching strings, uh, uh, when we will uh, consider it more on string problems. So let's quickly solve a problem uh, uh, which is also the problem of ICBC regionals Amrita Puri last year. Uh, so there is an array of numbers there is an array of numbers and you need to find a pair of numbers such that uh, the ZOR of you need to select A and B from this array such that A ZOR B is maximum You had the problem right. You are given a set of numbers. You have to find a pair of numbers so that the ZOR of those numbers is maximum. So there are actually n square pairs. So you can pair up every number and take a bit by ZOR. And then you have to find which one is the maximum. Of course, the name algo is you do an n square and then you compare every number. But you have to come up with something better than that. Take some time, think about it. And if, if you have a solution, then please propose it. So for this, what we are going to do is that for each number, we will find a uh, corresponding number with which the XOR is maximum. I mean, I mean to say that, uh, suppose you have some set of numbers. 
a one a two and so on up to a n now we find for each ith number a i the corresponding uh, uh, say b i for which a i xor i mean uh, some number b for which a i xor b is maximum we need to find this after we do this for each number among uh, uh, among all the pairs for which uh, a i xor b is maximum we choose that value so for each number we need to find a corresponding number uh, such that their xor is maximum so uh, if you see that uh, uh, if you consider a number a i and all the numbers just before a i say a1 a2 and so on up to ai minus 1 all these numbers we keep the bit representations of a1 a2 and so on up to ai minus 1 in the try a, if you have to process ai before processing ai say uh, the representation is say some zero Like this, some numbers are being represented. I mean, these numbers a1, a2, and so on up to a minus one are being represented in the form of a try. Now, for suppose a has a bit representation say one zero one one. Okay. Now, for this, we need to find the corresponding uh, number uh, whose xor is maximum. We know that uh, if two bits are same, then the corresponding bit for the xor will be zero, obviously. And the xor of the number will be zero. So what we have to do is that at every step uh, we have this number one zero one one. We check if some number has uh, as the initial bit of zero. If some num some number has a initial bit of zero, then we proceed towards that that value. I mean, uh, pro proceed to that link. And then the next next one will be having a next next bit is zero. So we try to proceed towards the link which has uh, a one. So uh, like this, traversing like this uh, uh, until we until we uh, traverse all the bits of this corresponding number a and calculate the xor at uh, add the value of the bit at each corresponding point. I mean, uh, as Madhav has told, it's the right solution. I'll explain it once more. So uh, like we have these numbers and we need to. Uh, have the maximum zor. Now the zor has a property that for similar one one zor is zero, zero zero zor is again zero. If we have a zero one or a one zero, then the zor is one. So what we do is that we take this whole array, each number, and we construct a try out of it. In this case, the try will have only two nodes instead of twenty six. That will be zero or one. That's a binary try. So like. We'll insert all numbers in this. So, like, they, they, uh, like we're dealing with a 32-bit number. So, the thing is, when we are trying to construct the maximum number, then its most significant bit bit should be one. That will be the maximum. Even if all all other bits are one, and the maximum uh, most significant bit bit is zero, then it will be a number less than that. So our objective is that first we'll try to satisfy that the maximum uh, uh, most significant bit is uh, one, and we'll proceed this way. So uh, let me quickly take an example. So the given numbers are 1, 2, uh, and 12, and 13. So uh, now, uh, as I said, this try would be built with the most significant bit at the top. And we'll proceed this way. And each of the numbers should be inserted as a 32 bit, or uh, I mean, in this case, I've taken Six, four, four. 4 bit numbers. So uh, now, uh, now uh, what we'll do is, that uh, we'll take a number 
like uh, I take up 12. So for 12, the the most significant bit is set. Okay. So now uh, I will try to find a number whose most significant bit is not set. So in this case, when I have to follow a link of 1, I will try to follow the opposite link. That is, if any of the numbers is present which has a most significant bit as 0, I will follow that link. And I will ensure, in this case, the most significant bit value is 8. That the minimum number, minimum ZOR could be 8. Because this one, one ZOR with 0 will be 1. So I will follow this link of 0. And again, at this point, 12 represent, uh, is represent, uh, represented as 1100. So again, uh, 1 is set uh, in this. So I will try to follow the link which has a 0. So I will follow this link and now I can ensure that the minimum ZOR is 12, which can be found. Again, there is a 0 here, but uh, so I will try to follow the 1 link. So I will follow this link and that comes out to be 13. Okay now, so we have considered 0, 0, 1, 0. So the ZOR which comes out to be is, the number which comes out to be is 1, 1, 1, 0. Which comes out to be 13. So 13 is the maximum ZOR. When I was considering 12, I'll take, at each step, I'll take one number and follow the same procedure for it. And the maximum or, or out of all that, those will be the num maximum ZOR. So, we have taken 12 as a number, okay? The first bit is set. I'll follow the zero link. Then another first bit, bit, bit is set. I'll follow another zero link. Then this bit is zero. So I'll follow the one link. Okay, now there is a zero. So I'll try to follow the one link. But there is no number because there is, this node doesn't exist here. That means that there is no number whose, uh, with this prefix and uh, this particular bit not uh, uh, being set in that. So I'll follow the zero link. Uh, that's why the number which comes out to be is 1110. Whenever you are, you will not be able to find an uh, appropriate path, you will end up with zero. If you are able to uh, uh, go to uh, uh, find a path, then you will end up with one. So I mean, there is another similar problem in which so I but let's keep it for the exercise that in an array you can choose any continuous sub subsequence. Continuous subsequence I mean like from the element i to j all the elements and take the ZOR. In an array of n elements you can take any continuous subsequence like starting from 1 till n or starting from 3rd element to the 7th element and take the ZOR of them. And you have to report the maximum ZOR among all these uh, uh, subsequences. This particular problem uh, uh, follows the property that at any step, if we, we will select the minimum edge which is not taken, and if we can include that in a tree, we'll include that in a tree. And if in a greedy, greedy fashion, and in, in this way, if we'll go, uh, we'll finally end up in a spanning tree, minimum spanning tree basically. So to accomplish that, uh, what we'll do is that we'll sort the edges according to the cost. Take the minimum edge. The minimum edge is suppose I'll name the edge. The minimum edge is edge number three, E three, and it connects vertex V one and V two. Okay. In this particular graph, uh, there's an edge E two F with cost one, which is the minimum. So we'll select this edge and say E and F are now connected. And this particular edge becomes the part of our minimum spanning tree. Next edge is of course 2 between F and C, F and D and C and D respectively. So you can choose any of these. It doesn't matter. Suppose we take this CD edge. So CD edge will be the part of our minimum spanning tree again of course 2. Okay. Next edge which will be there will be of C and F. So we'll take this edge. So you can see that E, F, C, D are already connected by these two edges. E, e F, F, C and C, uh, C, D. Now now the next edge which is minimum is F, D. So we'll 